Hey guys, so today I will be sharing with you my August wrap up. Um, August was a pretty good reading month for me. I did complete four books, which I am really, really excited about. So I'm going to share my thoughts on those today. And then right after that, I'll just kind of mention briefly uh, the books that I plan to read in September and just kind of lump it all together as I've been doing for the last couple months. Um, so yeah, let's jump right in. The first three books that I completed are all part of a series, and that is the rest of the Raven Cycle. I completed uh, book two, which was The Dream Thieves, book three, which was Blue Lily Lily Blue, and then the final book, The Raven King. Um, I really overall enjoyed this series. I mean, for those of you guys who don't know, this is a YA kind of urban fantasy, I I feel. Um, it takes place kind of in the south, so it kind of has a little bit of that kind of southern gothic vibe as well. There are witches and fortune tellers and, and just, you know, an array of different kind of mythical creatures in this world, and it follows our main characters, the Raven Boys, who are trying to find the spirit of a dead Welsh king who's supposed to grant them a wish when they find him, so they're kind of on this journey throughout this entire series. Really, really enjoyed the first one when I reread it uh, last month and talked about that one, but I had never continued on with the series, so this was my first time reading the rest of the series. I really, really enjoyed it. I mean, The Dream Thieves, book two, um, I really enjoyed. It picks up right after uh, the events of book one, and this one follows our, more of one of the other characters, one of the Raven Boys, uh, Ronin, who has an ability to kind of bring things back from his dreams, and kind of all of the complications and the trouble that he gets himself into um, from bringing all of these things back. There are people after him and everything in this one, and I really, really enjoyed kind of where the story went and how it developed. I mean, overall, I feel like I really enjoyed how everything developed. Blue Lily Lily Blue um, was another one that had great, great character development, but at this point in the series, I feel like, I don't know if it's because I was binging through all of these books, that I kind of started getting a little bit of fatigue um, of just kind of being in this world and spending so much time, just because it took me, you know, about a month or so to complete the entire series, and I was reading them all back to back. So I started feeling a little bit of the fatigue at this point. I just kind of wanted to, you know, be done with it or have a little break, but I didn't really want to put it down. I really wanted to continue it on. Um, so I pushed through this one, really still ended up enjoying the development and everything that happened in this one. Don't really want to get through um, too much more of a synopsis on this one just because I feel like it'll get into spoiler territory, but this was very, very well done. And then the finale, The Raven King, I honestly really, really enjoyed. I loved how everything kind of wrapped up and ended. So many things um, that just happened that I was really, really excited about. And just kind of that open ending in the end that, you know, Maggie Seavater kind of put there to kind of leave room for her new series that she's currently writing that follows Ronin um, from book two. So, you know, you have that new trilogy from her that is set in the same world, and you can kind of see how she sets things up at the very end of The Raven King going into this new series. So, really excited. I will hopefully, you know, I don't own any of the books in that other tril spin off trilogy. Um, at some point, I will pick them up most likely and read them. But as of right now, I'm taking a little break from The Raven Boys and this world just because I, again, have been in this world too long. Still really, really enjoyed it. I gave five stars to The Dream Thieves and about four, four and a half stars to the other two books in the series. Still really enjoyed these. And then I completed People We Keep by Alison Larkin. This was my July pick, I believe. Yes, for Book of the Month. Um, and I hadn't read it until now, uh, just because I had read some other, you know, adult contemporaries um, at that point, and I was just kind of, you know, tired of the adult contemporaries, so I took a little break to read fantasy, um, but picked this one up because I just don't want to leave my book of the month kind of just, like, floating around for months unread, um, because what's the point in subscribing to book of the month if I'm just gonna kind of, like, leave them on my shelf? But this one I really enjoy. This one follows our main character, April, who is a musician. Uh, she lives in a small town in upstate New York, and is kind of tired of this life that she's living. She's very, um very poor. She's living in, in in kind of this abandoned trailer uh, or motor home with her father and you know they don't have the greatest relationship. It's kind of a little bit toxic. Um, her surroundings and everything and she kind of feels like she's stuck where she is so she decides one day to kind of pick up all of her stuff and run away from home and pursue music and find somewhere else to live and this kind of follows her life um, within the next I believe three years or so afterwards. Um, and then kind of everything that happens to her, the kind of connections she makes with new people, um, the uh, kind of 
her fleeing kind of this past and, and continuing to repeat kind of her, her mistakes of the past as well. This was a really, really enjoyable book. I really loved the first um, kind of 120 pages or so. And then they introduced a romance in here that I just was absolutely hating. And this one is an example, or at least this kind of motivated me to not want to DNF books in the future to kind of keep pushing through when I'm not enjoying a book because at around the 120, 130 page mark, I wasn't enjoying it at all. I didn't really like this romance. I felt like it was very um, problematic and just wasn't really liking it at all and I wanted to put it down but I pushed myself through it and you kind of learn later on um, as she continues to progress through the story why she's making these mistakes, why she's kind of making these decisions, why she's allowing herself to fall into kind of these these insta-love kind of relationships and everything and, and you know why she does the things that she does. So it, it kind of explained and it's understandable why this character makes these decisions and I really really enjoyed that at least we got that explanation and we were able to really kind of see it even though I don't really agree with her decisions and everything but I really understand them and I really ended up loving the story overall. I feel like it was very beautifully told at the end you, you know you just have a very satisfying story even though it was you know very heartbreaking at times and very hard to get through some points um, this was overall a very very enjoyable read I'm really glad I pushed through I did end up giving this like a four four and a half stars really really ended up loving this one in the end now moving on to the books that I plan to read in September I'm currently in the middle of Yoke by Mary H.K. Choi I'm about 130 pages or so into it really 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 enjoying it it follows um, two sisters June and Jane um, they don't really get along, they kind of live kind of different, completely different lifestyles and everything. They're about three years apart. Um, and then one day, they, one of them gets cancer. And you find this out at the very beginning, and it's in the synopsis of the book, so I don't feel like it's a spoiler at all. Um, so then one of the sisters is kind of, you know, wants to take care of the other sister who becomes sick, and it goes from there. I feel like, you know, that synopsis alone, you're going to get a lot of heartbreak, a lot of emotion throughout this one. I'm really loving it so far. I really enjoy Mary H.K. Choi's writing style, and her characters, and her dialogue, and everything are just very kind of witty and kind of raunchy. This is definitely more of a new adult um, book with like the language and the themes and stuff in there, but I'm really enjoying it because Permanent Record by Mary H.K. Choi, the one that came out right before this one, is one of my favorite contemporaries of all time. So I'm really excited to continue on with this one. I have a feeling that this may also make it onto my list of some of my favorite books of all times, but we will see what ends up happening with this one. I also have an arc that I got from Nat Galley that comes out at the end of September. So at some point at the beginning of September, I'm gonna try and get through this arc so that I can review it and everything before it's released. And that is You'd Be Home Now by Kathleen Glasgow. I don't really know much about this one other than it being a YA contemporary, which I enjoy reading. Um, and I believe it has to do with, with some kind of substance abuse. Um, or some kind of like dependency to pills or some kind of sickness, something like that. It's one of those heavy, hard-hitting kind of YA contemporaries that I just, again, enjoy reading. I don't know why I like to torture myself that way. But this is, again, another one that comes out at the end of September, so I will definitely be reading it um, at some point at the beginning of September. And then the last two books that I have in, that I want to read in September are part of the Mid-Year Mystery Madness. If you guys did not watch my announcement video for that, I will link it on the screen so you guys can watch it. But we're doing kind of a little mini readathon this year that it's an extension of March Mystery Madness um, that I really, really love participating in every year. So we're just doing kind of a week-long thing in September from the 12th to the 18th where we just pick up a couple of mysteries and read it from subgenres that we may or may not be familiar with. Um, so the two books there, I'll mention those quickly because I did mention those in that announcement video, are Contagion by Aaron Bowman and Hexes and Hemlines by Juliet Blackwell. Um, these two, again, I mentioned briefly in that video if you guys want to check it out, but these are my two books that I'm planning on reading during that week for the Mid-Year Mystery Madness. Um, and then I don't know what else I'm going to read. Those are the four books that I have kind of on my immediate TBR. If I can get to more, I will most likely get to one more book um, after that at some point, but we will see what ends up happening or what I'm in the mood to read. I don't really want to put too many things on my TBR um, because I have been kind of straying away of the contemporaries now because I read so many of them 
in the summertime, so I kind of, you know, been diving back into like fantasy and science fiction and that kind of thing. So we will see what happens with the rest of my TBR. But yeah, guys, that is it for all of the books that I read in August and the ones that I plan to read in September. Comment down below. Let me know what you guys have been reading, what you guys are planning to read in September. I would absolutely love to know. Before you go, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you guys all again for watching, and I will see you all next time.